Good morning. My name is Scott Redler, Chief Strategic Officer at T3Live.com. And I'm Brittany Umar, and together we bring you Morning Call. We are seeing some red arrows around the world this morning. Europe on its third down day. Uh, Asia mostly lower, the Nikkei down about 2.2%, while the Shanghai is showing some resilience. In terms of our markets, we couldn't find the power to power through all-time highs yesterday and wound up reversing pretty hard. So, Scott, what did you make of yesterday's action? How did you handle it? Well, first, as far as overseas, you know, Europe is down on the third day, but it feels very controlled. It's not falling apart. It's not crashing. So I think that's like in stride. Right. As far as Japan, you know, Japan is something that the bears are pointing to because remember, it was up 3.1 percent. Well, it was down, uh, I think, a half percent, then another 2.2, and it's almost at the 2014 year lows or 2014 lows. And the Shanghai, though, is actually showing relative strength mm -hmm. so far, even though it didn't have a good year last year, now it's up 1%. So it goes with the whole theme of you know picking your spots and everything's not gonna go together. And that's probably what's gonna be a lot of what takes place in 2014. Mm -hmm. So overall pretty healthy. Was the action you saw in our markets as healthy? Well, you know, it was definitely a little tricky. Mm -hmm. I, I came in yesterday, I was long like 11 or 12 longs, you know, a lot of different types of stocks. And then, you know, once the market started to rally yesterday, if you remember, we started negative, went positive, went near those all time highs. My PL wasn't participating. So that gave me a red flag saying either my stock selection selection's not great or there's something a little fishy here. So P.S., midday, the market came in and somewhat failed. But if you look here at the chart of the SPX, you will see, you know, y you can't get too, too worried. You know, we talk about trends, we talk about this being, you know, your intermediate trend. That was your accelerated one. To start the year, we were going back and forth and then broke. Everyone right around here was calling for a 20% correction, at least a 200 day. Some were saying even more. And then we reversed and did like a bungee cord back up. So with that being said, right back to the high. So take a closer look here. If you take a closer look here, okay, I know the bears are growling and they're like claiming victory. What, what, what happened? One down day, an outside day, when we traded through the prior high here of 1842 and failed, giving you a red dog reversal sell signal. Then we closed on the lows through that low and that then created an outside day, a day to take notice. When you get a day to take notice, it doesn't mean we're going to fall back and retest the lows and get back into 1929 mode like the bears are saying. What it means is, you measure your risk, you clean up some positions, maybe get a little net short, and then see what holds. You have 1820, which is right there, and you have about 1810, 1812. If we hold this area and turn up, then I think that there's a, a better chance we, we take out those highs. And one more little nifty thing here, I want to give the Fibonacci fans you know, their level. Here's your Fibonacci retracements. So overall, the, the two-week move from the lows to the highs, we're not even at the 25% retracement, which if we hold, that's a very strong market. We could even see right around here into this congestion, which is about 1806, and that is also deemed strong. So just don't be too spoiled and don't start to do things a little too quickly. Well, in checking the temperature of the different sectors, let's start on the strong side and take a look at the Qs, which did log about a 0.8% loss yesterday. It is still above the eight days, so overall still looking pretty strong. Yes, and the bulls are, are spoiled here. This shows mm -hmm. you that there's definitely health out there because when technology leads, it's better for the markets. That means there's growth. That means people want, you know, stocks that move. And if you look here at the Qs, really no big deal. One down day above the 2014 highs. Look at that red dog reversal down here. Traded through the low, came back above, then screamed higher. So let's see if it comes in and holds higher. 89 would be really easy to hold. If it holds 89 and holds the 8, they hold the prior pivot and turns up. You better believe that the, the bears will be just as frustrated as they've been for the last, I don't know, two, three years. The bios have been strong as well, which is good for the bulls. Shows that there's an appetite for some risk out there. The, the IBB did retrace more than 1% yesterday, but similar case then to the Qs where no big deal. Yeah, well, this also has already made new highs of this year, which mm -hmm. shows health. You take a quick look here. You know, this is a down day. So if you wanted to clean up a little bit after an enormous move from this potent engulfing day, you know, let's see if it holds the eight day, which is even higher than the prior pivot. Pivot and, and the bios are typically the most speculative names out there. So people are really looking to get involved in these type of things, show you that there is appetite for risk. Here's the eight day and here's your prior pivot. And then meanwhile, on the other side of the spectrum, the banks have been out of play. And that was the case as well yesterday with the XLF showing some real relative weakness. Well, this one, it's like you could, it's good when you go from strongest, strongest to weaker because mm -hmm. you could just really see the difference. And if you look here at the XLF, Look at this lower high. This was the 2013 high or 14 high in the beginning and then retraced 
okay, bounced back, but this bounce back didn't take out the prior pivot, and then you had this small ascending channel here that wound up breaking to the downside with some power. So with that being said, if the banks deteriorate here or continue lower, that'll put some pressure on the markets. And just to show you one example, look at Bank of America. You know, this had this high level area here. This was my stop. And now let's see if uh, it holds around the 16. If it breaks below 16, maybe it retraces a little bit more. Use yesterday's low of 16, 18-ish uh, as your pivot. All right. Well, coming up, we're going to go in the trenches with stocks in the news this morning. But first, a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. I'm Mark Sperling, Director of Trading with T3 Trading Group and contributor to T3 Live. Do you trade on your own, but you wish you enjoyed the benefits of a large trading floor? With the T3 Live virtual trading floor, we deliver that experience to you on your computer. On the VTF, you can follow the long and short positions of experienced professional traders like myself, Scott Redler, and others, and listen to our live radio stations as we navigate the markets. In addition, you get the added value of a large community of sophisticated and like-minded traders. In my opinion, joining the room will be the best trading decision you will ever make. I would like to invite you to begin your membership with a seven-day free trial. To get started, visit t3live.com and click on the Virtual Trading Floor tab. Have a great day, and I look forward to seeing you in the VTF. We're back and going in the trenches with stocks in the news. In top headlines this morning, Facebook buying WhatsApp for $19 billion. The stock is down a little bit pre-market, prompting maybe some speculation that people think maybe they paid too much for it. But could this end up being a buying opportunity? Well, everyone's in the speculation phase. People are having a lot of fun <laughs> with the name, like, what's up? <laughs> you hear it all over the place. And, you know, people we made fun of them for buying Instagram for a billion. You know, this one's 19 billion. People also made fun of Google when they bought YouTube. They had no idea how they would be able to monetize it. But all in all, you look at Facebook, you look at the stock. We've talked about this every, you know, every few days, if not every day for the past, you know, God knows how long. Look at the chart here. Remember starting back from the, the cup and handle pattern. Here's your cup. There's your handle. That was when they reported earnings and showed they can monetize search. If you missed this accumulation pattern, you had a viable opportunity as it's right near highs. So now you go to the daily chart for the active guys, okay? On an active level, which is all you, you want to really look at right here, this was the, other, the last quarter in earnings. We held the gap and then gave you a move. So you have this ascending channel here. This is the eight-day moving average. It's been above it the entire time. This low here is 66.07. If it stays above 66.07 or 66-ish and doesn't close below it, really no big deal. Okay, maybe it's buyable and goes green today. I've seen crazier things. You know, I might buy a level versus a level because if this breaks and closes below it, you know what, why not a move down to potentially the 21 day, which it did see a few times in this area, which comes at like 63. So don't blindly sell, don't blindly short, let's measure the levels. This right here would be very impressive to hold. And even if it comes back in, no big deal. You go again to your weekly chart. This has been an unbelievable move. And now we'll see whether or not this creates a buying opportunity. All right, and on the earnings front, we have Tesla up on yesterday's report. This stock is off the highs, though, so what are the levels that we should watch? Well, it's off, it's, it's off the aftermarket highs. Right, right, right. You know, when it, when it reported, you know, remember yesterday everyone was talking about getting short into the earnings mm -hmm. or it was too overly priced. And then even those pre-talked um, about earnings, they beat those, and it was very impressive. And then if you go into it flat, which I go into, I usually go into stocks flat into earnings because... I do not need to be a hero or a zero. I know my risk tolerance. I take options into earnings if I have conviction on them because risk is premium paid. Or you could trade it after hours. So you go to Tesla and you look here at the chart. You will see stocks had an unbelievable move, obviously. If you're an investor in Tesla from back here and you hold it through every earnings report, congratulations. You caught a huge winner over the course of the past few years. It doesn't happen that often. If you trade the stock, trade it with trends. You know, meanwhile, here is that red dog reversal around 138. You know, you saw it here last night, okay, and you had about 10 minutes, 10 minutes to figure out, will it get above 206, hold above it, and extend? I know for me, I was trading it around 206, and then I had to come do the recap and go home for dinner because I haven't been home in a while, so I missed it. But anyway, once it got above there, went to 220 and change. So now, it has come a long way, so there might be some people that want to sell the news. So see, if you want to short it, short it versus an area, and if you want to be long it and trade it, just be careful. As long as it stays above 206, I think technically it looks good, and I still think this stock has a very big future, but it's going to trade from here. 
Well, sticking with earnings, Walmart is out and is down a little bit on some weak guidance. What do you think there? You know, this one, remember, two years ago was my stock pick of the right. year, and that was mm -hmm. when it was tight, and that was when there was a lot of opportunities in A play. You know, just to take a little trip down memory lane and go to Walmart real quickly, you know, I just want to show you a little lesson here. Look at that monthly channel here. This was almost a decade. For a decade, Walmart did absolutely nothing. That's why it became that play of the year. Boom. Anyway, let's go back to the daily and talk about now. Um, with that being said, you know, it's been sort of out of play of your high, lower high, another lower high, off a little bit with earnings. You know, you have a, a, a support sec uh, support right here at 74. So if it were to hold 74, I think it's, you know, somewhat okay. And then maybe it changes its trend. And then really for it to matter as far as, you know, pressure, pressure on the markets, support 72. Below the 200 day, it's been out of play for a while. And Apple down pre-market on a Barclays downgrade. Where might it be viable? Um, this morning I tweeted that I wanted to take a look at it at 530, 531, mm -hmm. and that's where it was, and now it's like a 533, no big deal. But this stock had a really nice move after earnings. Okay, we talked about um, the red dog reversal, we talked about getting into the earnings gap, and then it went all the way to resistance at 550-ish. And if you look here at the chart, you will see that a few things happened. First of all, remember that double bottom before the rally and move up? Here was your earnings shortfall. Okay, from there, we created an opportunity and it bounced back very quickly, showing you there was appetite. But where to come right back into the trend line? Then you saw a topping tail. So you take a closer look here to see how you can navigate it. This topping tail, after a big move from here, said, okay, reduce a little risk. If you reduce the risk right here, you, you weren't involved in this down day. And now today, you should be a little excited saying, hmm, maybe I could be a buyer into 530. The 21 day moving average right here is 532. So with that being said, let's see, maybe there's even a red dog reversal where it comes back, reclaims 534.35, and then you have your little pivot here, and then we see you know, how that develops. And the next time it tries to trade you know, through this ascending channel, it'll be coming from higher versus down here, and then perhaps you get a better trade. So if Apple's any good, I think it holds somewhere around 530. 5.30. Got it. All right. Lastly, let's check in on the metals. We've talked so much about how the story for the metals has been different in 2014. We did see gold pull back a little bit yesterday. So is the story changing? I don't think so. I think this was a you know, short-term pullback after a big you know, multi-week move. You look at the chart of, of, of gold, GLDs. You look at this long-term double bottom that the consensus was saying we would see a lot lower. Consensus was wrong. Usually the first two weeks of this year, I think most people were wrong. Then you had this uh, trend line here that it took out, but look at the resistance right there. Take a closer look. I think, you know, dip buyers probably will come in or would like to see, um, you know, this probably area hold. You know, it's, it's going to fill this gap. It didn't fill this gap or this gap, which showed demand. Now up here, it's extended from the 8, it's extended from the 21, so a pullback would make some sense. So right down 125.44, first thing it's got to do though to get there would be getting through yesterday's low and that is 126.16. I said give it a little bit of time and then perhaps it continues what has been a decent move for 2014. And while we're at it, why don't you show us silver, same sort of situation? Um, yes, yeah, silver didn't lead. It played catch up for those who were really involved in the sector. You look here now, you know, silver um, had this, they would call this like a boat type pattern where you have this lower level of consolidation. I'm still upset at myself for missing this. Seeing it close strong, above resistance as the metals penetrated and then boom look at the size of that gap up then yet another one but look how far it came filled this one i would say silver to stay on most you know traders radar i would think it holds this gap not a big deal that it didn't hold this one i think perhaps into this 2040 2050 area you know look for a viable strategy for it to continue if the metals want to continue all right great all right so what would be your last words of advice as we head into the trading session today that if you reduced risk yesterday, mm -hmm. okay, not a bad thing to do. You never know what an outside day is going to lead to. It could lead to a move down to the 50-day or lower, or we can go green today and then, you know, by tomorrow or Monday be testing those highs again. But it doesn't matter. You know, you could think clearly, you can embrace the volatility, and you could always get back in if you're, you know, you have a plan with your levels. For me, you know, I came in that short. I covered a little bit pre-morning call, and then I'll see if there's more downside. If there isn't, you know what, I'll see what's acting best. I'll try and put a few positions on and I'm going to be more tactical. I think tactical has been the way to go this year because we've been blindsided on a few reverse openings that, you know, weren't the easiest to deal with. Right. Stick to that individual stock action that we've yes, been seeing. Exactly. All right. All right. Well, with that said, happy trading, everybody. Have a great day.